Hi, my name is Mike Waitson. I'm an application engineer here at Tektronix. And today I'm excited to tell you about the new WFM2300 features that we've added to this portable waveform monitor that supports SDI, ASI, AES, timecode LTC, and a reference or blackburst input. With those kind of features, you can monitor a variety of different signals and check whether it's present or not on your system. As usual here, we have an array of cables that somebody needs to tidy up, but I have no idea what's connected to where. So let's take a look at this particular cable and connect it directly to the WFM2300. And automatically, it's able to detect the signal and tell me within the status bar that this is ASI that we're looking at. So quickly and easily, we can know what type of signal we have at the end of our cable. Connected an ASI signal to input A here. And now we've configured the waveform monitor to take a look at the physical layer of the signal. If we look at this particular signal, we can quickly see that this has a relatively good amplitude, which is measured automatically by the waveform monitor. And we can see there's a nice clean eye opening in this case. So this is a good signal because it's coming directly from our distribution amplifier. At the bottom of the status display, we can see what type of ASI signal is. So in this case, we've got 204 bytes of a positive signal at 39.4 megabits per second. So we can instantaneously see what the data rate of the transport stream is and identify the type of ASI signal that we're looking at. If we take the, uh, another signal that we connected to input B, that we have a 204 byte signal, but now that is negative polarity instead of positive polarity, which means that we're tapping off the other side of a standard distribution amplifier, which could present problems to other signals downstream that aren't able to process the negative polarity of the ASI signal. So we'll switch back to our input A and we'll try and correct that particular problem of, of having negative polarity in our DA by switching to a different port. Now the other particular pieces of the stream that we can take a look at are the transport layer. Select the measure button to display and pop up the menu and make sure you've selected the ASI PID list display. In this menu we can see the structure of the transport stream starting with the train at the top we can gradually move down to the program association and other parts of the stream. If there's a, a part of the tree that we can expand, you'll see a little uh, block next to it in red, and we'll just press the select to expand that. Now we can see in this particular stream that we have four program map tables that contain programs that we can look at. So let's take a look and see what's in this first program. In this program, we can see that we have a video payload, identified by a type 1B, which is indication that we have H264 payload information as our video packet. The next stream down there is our audio packet, and in this type 81, it's an indication that it's a Dolby AC3 stream. So we have a compass stream in this particular case, and then associated with our video, we have our program clock reference. And so we can step through each one of these programs and identify quickly and easily what's within each individual program, just cycling through each part of the tree structure. You can see that we've got a couple of ghost packets down here, as well as a null packet at the bottom contained within this transport. So we can identify the types of streams and packets present within our transport. And we can also see that in some cases we get error conditions that are shown in red, indicating that there's either a sync byte or continuity error. And that information can be viewed within the alarm status. So here you can see the ASI transport sync loss packet indicator, the ASI sync byte error indicator, and the continuity counter error indicator. And in this case, we had some continuity counter errors indicated by the error and that we've had seven packets in error. So now you've seen some of the new features in the WFM2300 to support ASI. But don't forget the WFM2300 supports SDI, AES, 
black burst and tri-level sync references. So you can plug in a variety of different signals to test each of your specific cables for troubleshooting problems within your facility. It has a whole wealth of new features too that we haven't yet talked about, which you can check out on the website, which are AV delay and propagation delay, that you can see how long a signal is going along a particular signal path or processing through equipment. So don't forget to check out the audio video delay propagation option that's available now within the WFM 2300. Also, this unit can now generate Dolby E streams along with a variety of test signals for SDI. So there's an option that allows you to monitor Dolby signals as well. So, a lot of great features in the WFM 2300. Don't forget to check them out on the website. <laughs>